Hey people, welcome to another tutorial on Sign Global. Today I'm going to address a specific question that was asked over and over again in the comments um, in the last few videos we put out. Lots of you wanted to know how I arrange my tracks. And of course, there are a few different ways to get from A to B. But today I'm going to show you the method I'm using all the time, which is structuring my track and then recording the whole thing in one go. And then, of course, going into editing afterwards. I'm going to use a MIDI controller for this, and we will go over the mapping for that as well. But for now, let's start with a quick overview of the track itself. So let me unmute everything and have a listen. So that was our track with everything playing at once. Let's dive into our separate elements. So the first two tracks here are kick tracks. This is my main kick drum, and this is just an accent that happens every now and then, just to add some groove. And you can already see I'm using a rack here. All of the drums I was using today came from one of our new products, which is an Ableton Rack Pack. I'm going to drop in an overlay so you can see what it looks like. And it contains six kick drum racks, eight bass racks, eight dirt loop racks, eight bottom perk racks, 10 drone racks, and five Atmo racks. So the kick drum I landed at sounds like this, but of course you can choose these variations down here. And you can already see there's a huge amount of variation possible with these. These racks really lend themselves to experimentation. So you can see there's a whole section for amping and then a whole another section for rumbles, reverbs, delays and stuff like that. And the same goes for all the other racks. For example, the bass rack. If I solo this for a second, this is my original sound. And you have a sample selector here, you can transpose your sample, you can uh, apply different forms of saturation, filters, all kinds of stuff. Then we have a dirt loop rack, which in our case today was used for something similar to Hyatt's. A little shakery with some nice delay on there. Next track is the Atmos rack. And this just provides a little bit of texture and noise layers for the background. Then we have another atmosphere. Next track is our right symbol. Some closed hats. And I used a vocoder here just to make it more similar to a shaker. And then our main synth is Granulator 3 with a weird mental sequence. And last but not least, we have a few return tracks here. This delay over here is just used for sound design purposes. This reverb is my main effects reverb and the echo obviously provides some delay and we're going to come back to these in a bit. That's pretty much it. So the benefit of recording something live is that in most cases you will end up with something sounding way more organic than the typical shoving blocks of MIDI and audio around. And especially if you're using a MIDI controller with faders and knobs that you map to volumes and other functions within your project, chances are that you will come up with stuff that you wouldn't normally come up with in the traditional arranging way. So to demonstrate this concept before we go into the live arrangement, this is a picture of my MIDI controller. 
And as you can see, it has a lot of faders, buttons, and potential meters here. And I will also show you my MIDI mapping in Ableton. And the thing with techno is, like mentioned in a previous video, we are mixing as we go. So everything was already pre-mixed, which means I can be sure when the levels are at the place they are now, everything will sound kind of balanced. And of course, I have to keep this in mind when I map my faders, buttons and knobs. So starting off with our kick drum, this is my first track. I mapped both of these to my first fader here. And as you can see in the mapping, there are maximum values applied to each of those. So my main kick will not exceed minus 7.6 dB and the accented kick will not exceed minus 14.7 dB because that's where I landed when I mixed the track. And then the same thing is true for all the other tracks. So I mapped my bass to channel number two. Number three are my hats. Number four is the little background texture. Channel number five is the atmosphere. Number six is my ride. Number seven is the shaker slash closed hat. And number eight is my main synth. And as you can see, all my maximum values are right here. So I can be sure that whenever I choose, I can slam all my faders all the way to the top and everything will still sound balanced. For channel number eight, by the way, I didn't even bother to map my volume fader because I'm just using a low pass filter to bring the main synth in and out of the mix. The buttons for this project are mostly unmapped, but I mapped the first green button you see here to a high pass filter whenever I want to take out some energy. And the gray button above that is mapped to the mute on the complete drum section. So I'm going to take out all my drums when I press this button. And last but not least, I mapped certain parameters of certain tracks to send B and C, which is my reverb and my delay. And I put them on these faders here. So this is my echo and this is my reverb. And whenever I'm in a mini break or even in a big break, I can pull these up and apply some effects to the tracks I've chosen, which is the drum track and my main synth. So now it's time to live arrange. I'm gonna hit record here in a second and then record the whole thing in one go. This doesn't always work out, but most of the time it does. And especially if you get more experienced and using this technique, you will have way less fuck ups than when you start out. So I highly recommend that you take some time to practice because as with everything else, you will get better the more you do it. And then once we're finished recording, we should end up with a nicely prearranged recording of a whole track. And then we can still go back into the project and correct any mistakes we might have made during the recording, polish a few things here and there, add things, take things away. But the main thing is you end up with a proper arrangement and go from there, which is way, way quicker than shoving clips around in Ableton's timeline.
So that is our recording session done for today. And if we now switch to the timeline view, we can see everything is there. Let me quickly engage the automation. So from here on out, you can go into your project and correct any minor mistakes you made during the recording. For example, I engaged the auto filter on the drum track a little bit too early or too late. No problem. Just go in here, fix that, add some stuff like effects, take some stuff out, play around with the arrangement. And from there on out, just render the whole thing and you're good. So as I mentioned, I highly recommend incorporating some MIDI controllers into your workflow. They make life just so much easier sometimes. That's it from me today. I hope you found this useful. As always, make sure to check out our website, sign.de, and I'm going to see you soon. Take care.